Hello and welcome to another video. This video took me a lot of time and effort and I will appreciate if you watch till the end. Today we will be discussing Starlink and how it is potentially a game changer when it comes to internet connectivity for us earthlings. As we all know, the internet has become an essential part of our day-to-day -day lives but not as essential as the big three. Food, water and shelter. But it is quite essential as it is used for many day-to-day -day activities like calling, texting, video calling, um watching tiktoks and even this video right here that you're watching i'm pretty sure you're watching it over the internet like it or not the internet makes life easier and some people cannot live without it Shh, definitely not me but i know that some of you you all out there you can you cannot live without it. with that being said what is starlink starlink is a satellite internet service that uses thousands of satellites approximately 550 kilometers from earth's surface to deliver fast and low latency internet to almost everywhere on earth unlike regular satellite internet services which come from single geostationary satellites that orbit the planet approximately 35,786 kilometers above the earth's surface resulting in slower speeds and higher latency so in basic terms older satellites are are much farther away meaning you get slower and higher latency internet but Starlink being closer means that you're going to get higher speeds and lower latency internet if you live in a big city you probably have access to fast internet services maybe at 500 megabits per second or more thanks to advancements in technologies like 5g and fiber but imagine having to deal with a few local ISPs who offer speeds that go as low as 2 Mbps while some even claiming to offer high bandwidth and fast internet in form of fiber and you think oh you're saved but no 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 they charge high amounts to get high speeds they have hidden data caps even when they claim it's unlimited and they also experience frequent downtimes which could result in you losing your job or missing an interview if you work remotely I mean how are you going to explain to your employers that your internet suddenly went out for three days straight. PSA, this still happens to you today in Nigeria. Shout out to the internet service providers we have. Installing newer technology infrastructures and providing super fast internet services can be sustainable and even lucrative in big cities, but not so much in rural areas where there are only a couple of people in communities or the people cannot afford high amounts to pay for these internet services, which discourages these network providers from bringing these expensive infrastructures to these areas. I mean, how much can you really charge a village to provide them with fiber internet on top of all of that unfortunately in a lot of countries including mine you could be living in the biggest city and your network will still be terrible because of the population and the lack of resources to cater to everyone all of these limitations are why elon musk decided to create starlink with the main mission to bring fast and low latency internet to places that people do not normally get access to them examples are like mountains forests cruise ships remote islands villages airplanes and so on this can even be a solution to bringing internet to people who have survived war attacks but before all of this is possible there are a couple of things that need to be in place first which we will talk about before the end of this video this part of the video is for you guys who keep comparing starlink to your traditional 5g internet or your fiber starlink does not use the same technology as fiber or 5g and i feel an apples to apples comparison between them is a complete waste of time as one is not meant to replace the other at least not yet to me it is like comparing a bike to a car yes they share similar properties and also perform similar tasks but a bike is not meant to take the place of a car neither is a car meant to take the place of a bike because depending on your use case or situation you might even need to have both and i feel this is how we should view starlink as an alternative and not a replacement you people that are crying everywhere that ah my 5g is faster than starlink how come you're not comparing your 5g to fiber which is already reaching terabits in a couple of countries already well before before you rush out and give Elon Musk your money, here are some limitations and things to note about the Starlink. Number 1. Availability Starlink may not be available yet in your country or your location might have been exhausted. So please make sure to visit www.starlink.com forward slash map to find out your location status. Number 2 is customer service. The customer service in its earlier days were slow and unresponsive. However, from my recent experience, their customer service has improved significantly and they are now much more helpful than most Nigerian ISP customer services. But make sure not to send a mail when reaching out to them as the proper way is by going to your Starlink app, click on support, then click on contact Starlink customer support and speak to the chatbot. 
If the chatbot doesn't help you with your problem, then click on create a ticket and then you'll be redirected to a human. Number 3 is hardware. The initial purchase of the Starlink kit may be a bit pricey for some, but with this purchase you get a dish, a router and all the cables that are required. Here are the different Starlink kit prices which I have also created to include the features, speed ranges and what to expect with each kit. Also, please pay attention to the recommendations to find which kits will work best for you. The Starlink Mini and V3 are only available currently in the United States, while other countries will receive the V2 standard or the high performance. Installation is DIY and it is really easy to set up, or you can pay someone to help you set it up. Although if you damage your kit, you will need to purchase a replacement parts, some of which are not sold on the Starlink shop. An example of which is the dish. Our Starlink only provides replacement parts for devices that came broken, which still will take some time. And if this is your primary source of internet, bye bye. Number 4 is power consumption. The entire Starlink V2, which is the most commercially available, draws between 40 to 60 watts on normal usage, which operates on AC power, meaning you can power it off a regular power bank and would need an AC inverter to run. But if you want one that uses less power, you can try to get your hands on the Starlink Mini, which only draws 30 watts, but is not available anywhere outside the United States for now. Number 5 upload speeds. Starlink is definitely not the best when it comes to upload speeds. For me, I get around 20 megabits per second upload, which is quite average. And you might even get worse depending on the plan that you choose to go with. If you have constant power supply, this is really no issue at all, as you can just start your uploads and just go do something else. But if you want to be able to upload files super fast, I'm sorry, Starlink is not yet there. Starlink claims to deliver load latency, and in my tests, this is what I get. I know my gamers in the audience will be wondering how it performs in games. Well, here it is. She put this blade in my hands. She put this blade in my hands, and my whole life changed. You may experience some lag if your connection switches from one satellite to the other, but in my testing, it is really non noticeable except when it is cloudy. Number seven is weather. In my experience, the speed drops by up to 60% when heavy clouds form before a rain, sometimes even taking up to 30 minutes to reconnect and to recalibrate. But overall, not outrightly terrible, with you still being able to stream 4K videos without buffering. The Starlink dish itself is also designed to handle a wide variety of temperatures and weather conditions. They claim it can withstand extreme cold, heat, sleet, heavy rain, and gale force winds. And it can even melt snow with its inbuilt heater, so every time it snows, you don't have to take a shovel to your Starlink dish. Number 8 is space to mount your hardware. Users will live in an area with a lot of tall trees buildings and obstructions may not have the optimal mounting position, which may lead to lower speeds as the dish requires a clear view of the sky, preferably a high point. If you have the V2 kit, you would need to nail the base to a surface or buy extra mounting hardware or even construct one of your own. But the Gen 3 and Starlink Mini both come with inbuilt kickstands. Number 9. Regulations Due to regulations, you cannot just pick up a Starlink and go to an unsupported country and use your Starlink. After 2 months, you would get a notification to return back to a supported country or risk your account being limited, which is quite a bummer. Here was I thinking we could just pick up a Starlink and travel to anywhere in the world and use it, but apparently not. Now on for this regulatory body zone. Now I'm going to be talking about the benefits of Starlink. Number 1 is high speed connectivity. Starlink delivers higher average internet speeds than most African countries' internet service providers. 
and giving these people access to this quality of internet can potentially be life-changing. Visit www.starling.com map and click on the availability drop-down to get an idea of your download speeds, upload speeds and latency in your particular location. Also, here is a chart I made of the average Starling speeds versus average internet ISPs in Africa. Number 2. Easy installation. The installation of Starlink is quick and easy compared to laying down fiber cables or constructing cell towers, which makes it way more feasible for remote areas to get access to internet through the use of Starlink. On receiving your Starlink kit, here's how to set it up. After unboxing, you are greeted with a Starlink dish, a base, a Starlink cable, a power cable, and a Starlink router, depending on which generation you buy. Assemble your dish and mount it in a place with a clear view of the sky. And then, connect your Starlink cable and your power plug to your router. Make sure the power LED on your router is on. Then head over to the Starlink app after you've downloaded it from Google Play Store or your App Store. Click on Start Setup. Select your Starlink version. Click check for obstruction if you aren't sure about the position you mounted your dish. If you are, then click I have a clear view and click my Starlink is plugged in. Then go ahead to connect to your Starlink network in your Wi-Fi settings and configure your Starlink Wi-Fi name and password. Just like that, your Starlink has been set up successfully. Never have I imagined for the installation of a Starlink network to be this quick and easy. Number 3. Reliability Have you ever wanted to make a phone call or use the internet only to discover that there is no cell service? Mind you, this just doesn't go on for minutes. Sometimes it's hours, sometimes it just goes on for days. Many of us Africans are not new to this experience. Recently in March of 2024, we experienced some network blackouts which happened for days due to some damage that was done to the subsea cables. However, Starlink uses a completely different technology from fiber optics or traditional network cables, which allows it to overcome many of the limitations associated with these other technologies, which in turn reduces downtime. And when I say downtime, for Starlink it's network degradation meaning you still get internet access but at much lower speeds. Number 4. Wide Coverage Starlink can deliver internet access to almost anywhere across the world, with its thousands of satellites that are in low Earth orbit. So no matter how remote your location is, Starlink will most likely get to you. For number 5, we have the service plans. If you want to check this for your country, please visit this website. Here is a list of the service plans that are available to us in Nigeria. The standard plan gives you unlimited internet, which is best for most people. However, this plan is locked to just one location. Priority plan gives you a faster and better network experience with the data allocation that you choose. And when this is exhausted, you are thrown back to the standard unlimited plan. The roaming plan gives you slightly slower speeds than your standard plan but you still get unlimited data and the ability to change your location unlike the standard plan. Number 6 is truly unlimited bandwidth. One of the biggest advantages to getting a Starlink is that they offer truly unlimited plans. I know this because I've personally used over 1 terabyte of data on my Starlink in the span of 1 month. So you get to download and stream all you want without fear of spending more on bigger data allocations. At number 7, we have less government regulations. From my testing, Starlink is less regulated than local internet service providers. An example of this was when crypto websites were shut off from being accessed from Nigeria. I connected to my Starlink and could use these crypto websites without any problem or VPNs. And for the last point, we have evolving technology. SpaceX is new to the satellite internet game, and Starlink is still in its early stages, meaning a lot more research and development are still to come, which might bring about a significant increase in network quality and speed. As we speak, SpaceX has currently launched about 6,000 satellites into the orbit, with plans to launch even more, potentially paving way for internet speeds that ranges from 1 gigabit per second all the way to 10 gigabits per second. This is really exciting, I must say.
Now, with all that being said, and my personal experience with Starlink, I think it is super exciting technology that provides a really good internet experience for its users. And for me, I think them being able to compete already in the internet space is already a big W for them, to be honest. Because this is just their first generation, and imagine the type of speeds that they'll be able to produce, let's say, 10 years down the line. Now, if you want to buy Starlink, please head over to www.starlink.com. When you get to the website, you put in your location, your address to be precise. Yes, and it gets you to this page. However, on this page, if you see that it's telling you that Starlink is at capacity, it means your area has been exhausted. You can still go ahead to place an order and they will deliver a kit, but it might take a while. But if you do put your address and it brings you to this page right here, which just says no contracts, 30 days trial, shipping in one or two weeks, then you're good to go. You can select an optional accessory, put in your details and boom, place an order for your Starlink. SpaceX promises to give you a full refund if you buy a Starlink kit and within 30 days you are not satisfied with the performance. You could choose to return it and get your money back. Thank you for watching this video to the end. It's been quite a journey getting into this point. Um, please make sure to like the video and leave a comment once again and if you're not subscribed please make sure to subscribe see you in the next one and it's still in its very hey. now with all of that being said and my personal experience with Starlink Maga, Maga, I beg go. May your picking no they cry. I dey, I dey call you and then they hear everything. Your picking, wait, the cry they enter my distance. It enter the video where they make. I beg.